Kingdom Rush is turning 10 years old this year, the very game that has changed me and so many others from unexperienced and impressionable lads into greasy but manly gamers. And in the celebration of this upcoming anniversary, I thought it would only be appropriate to finally buy this game on Steam and give it a real run for its money. So today we are going to attempt an old challenge of mine, one that I used to fiddle with a couple years back. That's right, even at a young age, your all-time favorite all-star had his game on, but I never succeeded. The last snow level would always make me go home empty handed. But after 5 years I returned to this game with cock in hand and delusion on my side to finally finish this challenge once and for all. So can you beat Kingdom Rush without stars or heroes? Sit back, grab some animal crackers and enjoy the video. After you're done maybe you'll even hit that subscribe button or send a tip to my OnlyFans because you probably want to date me. Immediately we are dropped off the battle bus into these bewildering lands. No story, no bullshit, just straight in the action. A tsunami of euphoria and dopamine washed over me as I blasted my first greenling. I forgot how good this felt. I couldn't get enough. Trust me, when you fire this game up, your little fucking nuts are gonna start quaking, buddy. There he was. The cutest damned thing I've ever seen in my entire life. But my towers ran on autopilot and blasted his ass into oblivion. I had a hard time forgiving myself after this one. Ricky meant me no harm. He was just passing by to flee the war zone. And I killed him. Anyway, this level was even easier than accidentally smashing your pinky toe against the table leg. So I quickly got over it and left the chat. As always, finishing the first level gave me the combined ego of Tyler1 and your average Xbox Live player. So this is a good time to discuss the rules. Rule 1. I can't use any Mario stars that I may collect along the way. Rule 2. I can't phone a friend aka bring a hot date with me aka using a hero. Rule 3. We play on veteran or else I have failed you all. Given that I have attempted this challenge before. Adding a rule that says I can't lose any lives would obviously be more than asking for a spanking. But this being 2021, I know that my pain is what you sickos feed on. So I have made a compromise with a side quest. Let's see how many levels I can beat without losing lives. I am in no way obligated to try until the bitter end. But given the fact that I am deluded, then you all know that I am absolutely going to do exactly that. Is there any way that the shadow archers won't violate my rights in this one? Will I finally unlock the secret romance? option with Ilaria. And does Vesnan have a well thought out pension plan? Let's go! It shouldn't come as a surprise to you that these next two levels were free. If you're one of those people who still think that men can multitask, then these early levels are here to prove you wrong, as it was easily feasible for me to write this part of the script while playing. One would not think that a run like this would turn my brain into mush this early in the game, but for some goddamn reason, this level was even harder than my morning would. Maybe this is the reason why you unlock a hero here. Or maybe it's because I don't have any level 4 towers yet. I don't know, but what I do know is sending two ogres only halfway through this level is straight up diarrhea inducing. I didn't sign up for this. I don't recall this level ever being this hard. Even worse was that I had forgotten my OP strategy, so I had to dig deep in my mind palace to unravel it. But with a bit of cleaning up the addict, if you will, you know, throwing things out I don't need, I was able to recall it. It may not look like much, but trust me, all these enemies will commit Sudoku after laying eyes on what this strat can do. The only problem is the title one of the Kingdom Rush franchise, pounding my troops in and slipping through my defenses. Because of these guys, I accidentally broke the sacred laws of King Dennis's holy dojo and uttered both the F word, C word and SMPH word within his borders. But with a bit of adapting to my strategy, the ogres were rendered completely irrelevant to my mission of preventing Vesnan from spreading his multi-culture to our beloved country. The biggie issue here comes with our over-reliance on barracks. Getting through this wave without the bandit pulling their knife tricks on my soldiers while getting the wolves to sit would prove to be quite the tedious task to overcome. But my tries was all for nothing in the end, cause I lost a grasp of these two MMA fighters and they kicked me from the zoom call without hesitation. Just to put into perspective how desk smashing enticing this was, I will just let you know that I had spent 6 hours on this and now had to spend yet another hour just to get past this wave again. But luckily I controlled the nerves this time and sucked up the enemy's health through a straw without ever stopping before the river was dry as well. This victory was well earned, but me already considering surrender multiple times this early into the run had me a bit worried for what I was in for on this PG broadcast. 
However, this next level was going to bring me painkillers in the form of woodland elves. You may think that the best archers are the three lurking Parkinson patients, but we all know that these take the number one spot. Hey, speaking of archers... Hang on to your steak and cheese, mate, because this is where it got interesting. This tower whoops ass faster than my interest in vengeance declined. Getting this tower so early into this run is a complete game changer. Don't tell Ironhide about the 8 second cooldown on this ability, because it is absolutely overpowered. I really don't hope these enemies are into the art of tentacle Porn, because this upgrade is the only thing I've planned for this special surprise party. Some of you may be unhappy with the amount of abuse that is going to ensue, but trust me, this ain't no family friendly Lego Star Wars type shit. Enemies will get stronger, so this tower will be vital to our success on this operation. These inbred spiders certainly didn't have a say in it. If I had not unlocked this level 4 tower here, I'm afraid it wouldn't have been possible. But you know what they say, 2 is better than 1. This is the level where my crippling OCD is my biggest enemy. Developing a starting strategy without getting ticks and while trying to remain calm was a pain in my rectum. That shit was nothing compared to what was about to happen next though, because there was a new contestant on my talent show who would not be so easily discarded. These fucks don't care about your religious or political beliefs. All they care about is sucking your wife's toes while you are forced to watch. And I had no choice but to just let it happen, since my reign of fire and reinforcements does as much damage as the Night King did in season 8 of Game of Thrones. This wave completely fried my brain. Walks plus shadow archers is not a healthy combo. Because of this one wave, I was forced to try hard way harder than I had originally planned. But after a premeditated 195 IQ play, I was able to outmaneuver over these slow toads and continue my authoritarian obsession. Fast forward a little bit and I found myself in a bit of a tense situation yet again. But out on the horizon I was seeing a dark knight in shining armor coming to my aid. He was simply here to save my ass for he can take it because he is no hero. He's a silent guardian, a watchful protector. Wait, this is just a big stupid poopy head aka a customer who wants a serving of that extra large menu special with a free diet coke. The sex dungeon overlord only had one goal in mind other than giving me a knockout of course and that was getting into the citadel and bringing our king back to his thunderdome for questioning about his atomic program only i was standing against this man with a literal iron will and y'all's favorite fast food reviewer but with a bit of careful barrack micro and strategic planning he eventually got pacified by my holy officers doing god's work for me so far we haven't had to sacrifice any of our organs to succeed and beating this meathead first try had now restored my faith in linera's education system and just like an American filing his taxes. I was screaming give me more. So I brought the fight to the next province. Our stay here in the north is pleasant. Throwing objects at things you don't like and hiding from the authorities is a common norm. I can only recommend it if you happen to be in the area. Like pretty much all the previous levels, this one was yet another puzzle to solve in the first couple of waves. We need magic, we need archers, cause Wrath of the Forest is our only saving tits this run. We need barracks and these to get in range of my obscure circles of doom. The flying rats had no problem telling me their feelings. And I was now starting to realize that a lack of range was going to be an even bigger problem than anticipated. But for now, pesky trolls were on the menu. And later the Winter Wolf made its debut. Not gonna lie, dealing with these gave me micro penis. Fast moving enemies with high health is not a good concoction, especially in trying times like these. Clenching your intestines tighter than an Edson's ass and hoping that a party won't be scheduled on your doorstep is your only option for success. While we are at it, I wanna give a huge shout out to my man Tommy. He has been stuck here for as long as I can remember, but he can still tell what's going on. And he knows that it's hip to be square. A big thank goes out to him for cheering me up when morale was low. Dicks out for his freedom. All in all, this level wasn't all that spine crushing. So after a bit of tangoing with the Winter Wolves, the deal was sealed and I moved on. As level's difficulty increases and my resources only non-creases, you may be wondering how I'm still going strong without any lives lost. Well, I have put an easy to follow step by step guide together for you which is applicable to every level. Here you go. Step 1. Clean your room until not a single dust particle remains in order for you to perform in a healthy environment. Step 1 and a half. Fasten your condom. This step is not required but highly recommended. Step 2. Spend 2 to 3 hours developing your starting strategy. If you are having trouble with this step, try turning your art tower off and on. Step 3. Fuck you! In an attempt to make me lose, Ironhide tried to throw in the biggest dudes I've ever handled thus far. Go! Ah! 
but even that would prove to be as cringy as a 2012 gaming intro. Not even these guys could stop my rampage. However, a far better attempt at making me fail was soon to be discovered, when the cheerleader of the troll community was introduced, and that meant that every bobbing troll on the block would go radioactive, like a kid who just tried vitamin gummies and energy drinks simultaneously. This troll hooligan was banging his drum like he banged my butt cheeks, and quite frankly was making this way more difficult than the endless stream of matriarchs was already making it. But with some of that root and table abuse, I got the job done. And now we have arrived at the point in the game that defeated a young Kusuna many years ago. But this time I came prepared, supplied with tinder so I could keep myself entertained when boredom was a threat to my masculinity. My nuts immediately started quaking yes. when I fired this level up. Not only did I unlock the armor lowering mage, which was going to be big for a run that didn't allow upgrades. But I also now found out that the sun ray was on the steam version. The beginning of this speedrun was yet again very problematic. In this challenge, the first couple of waves is always ass shrinking. These trolls were tearing me a new asshole, to put it simply. But little did they know that a prostate exam was going to be on their schedule today. Cause after 4 hours of me stroking the fuck out, an optimized strategy was found. Turns out that a 2 for 2 times 2 deal is worth it here. And let me tell you, this strategy... Macho broken though. However, the game was going to throw some curveballs at me, but that was some juvenile attempts at making me turn back. A well-timed tier 1 tower split is the secret formula to stopping these from blasting by your defenses, and the genetically infused Dark Knights didn't stand a chance either. I mean, they kind of walked all over my dick a few times, but that was before I got serious. All that was needed was a little bit of LCS strategies, and some help from my favorite booty slappers in the current arc of the anime, with the healing upgrade that acts as their condom for the embodiment of STD on this stage. They will be ready to fuck for a good while, stalling these overgrown dark knights for longer than they could last. All these enemies would have had better luck walking all the way around the mountain if they wanted to get past here, which for some reason seems to be their only goal in life. But I would soon encounter a worthy opponent. The abominable snowman was here to offer my tower soldier snow cones, to which they declined, and I assumed that made him angry. I made that assumption upon seeing him do a big smash. You may think that this boss would be a tad bit difficult with these hard hitting rules. And and you may have been right, cause this albino gorilla was getting way closer to my exit than I had anticipated. But I will do anything in my power to obtain that bread baby. Even if that means sacrificing my holy officers. But god damn, I squeezed his nuts so hard that his face turned into a blushing emoji out of pure shock. With this flawless victory, I'd completed all levels so far without losing a single emoji. Quite frankly, I thought that my dubs was enough to satisfy our king's thirst for dominance. I didn't want to put my sanity, boner and perfect extermination on the line to continue this conquest. I had paved the way for the king to swoop in and finish the job. But we all know that Dennis is as useful a king as a condom is to a sterile person, so he could not get it done himself. And since I was the only crime fighting general in the area on his zip recruiter app, I was forced to continue Mission Impossible in the depths of hell. With mouse and stress ball in hand, I arrived at Bestland's home turf. To make up for the pain this shit was going to bring me, there was a surprise waiting around the corner for me. You all know of what I am speaking. This thing is the most advanced piece of technology since the Nokia 3310. Forged with dwarven technology and blessed with bowling fast layers, elbow grease and Thor's nut. This is clearly something the general public should not know about. However, it will be expensive without the discount upgrades, so this is only meant for special occasions. After some adjustments, I was relieved to leave the north behind and breathe in the sulfur and carbon dioxide found in the air of these diverse lands. But that shit didn't last long, cause I just now realized I had forgotten my license to shred when crossing the border control. And that led to many sad yanks after hours upon hours of unsuccessful gameplay, due to a lack of proper burial arrangements. These fucks didn't stay dead. It is common widespread knowledge, knowledge that these skinny peats was put in the game to give you faith in this part of the game, not being complete bohiggy. Just a dick slap to the forehead and these folks are pretty much gone. 
on us. But in this run, they will bring us nothing but doom. Attempting this was like being a ginger and trying to sunbathe. The outcome was discomfort and failure was inevitable. Just trying to stay alive on this one was no joke. I have spent way too long on trying to figure out the best possible way to blast the equivalent of hemorrhoids on this stage. And it's actually possible like this. But no matter my actions, wave 6 would always bring unavoidable spanking because of these two skeleton knights. Dealing with these this early in the stage is way too soon for humanity to comprehend. But I had almost forgotten what I had unlocked on this stage. Tesla abuse was my last and only hope. Getting it as your first tower is a bit of a stretch since it is more expensive to get than your favorite e-girl on Twitch. But my Kingdom Rush experience had been ruined when I fired this baby up. For your information, the Tesla normally dishes out 66 to 121 damage. Try and guess how much it had without stars. I'll give you a few seconds to answer. It was a trick question because it had even less than that. I'm sorry, but beating this no lives lost is impossible. I'm calling it. But before you go ahead and beat it on normal and explain to me how to do it, then I'm going to remind you that changing the difficulty from normal to veteran turns the level from feasible to stupid hard. Cause on veteran, even demon spawns cause skeleton knights to emerge from the graveyard. I only know one chat who might have the skills and knowledge to prove me wrong on this. He is the embodiment of Malik Hammer Fury. And time and again, he has proven the improbable to be absolutely conceivable. But for my part, we are simply going to beat this. It wasn't easy, but eventually these cultists would fall victim to my superiority. Later, bitch. A minor setback was suffered, but one more hour of playing and three lives left and these political extremists was destroyed using facts and logic. This next one clearly tells us a lot about the motivations behind the Franz Ferdinand assassination. This level introduces even more anal tumors who want nothing else but to be a pain in the ass and see me fail. But first we had to go through the usual therapeutic experience of wasting time I could have otherwise spent leveling up Kakinos on developing a starting strategy that would be the proper response to the onslaught of health the pro-life conservatives made their entrance and that meant that the fun was now over. Hello person who irrationally wants to me, it's so good to meet you! Dealing with these without the OP versions of the Tesla and Rain of Fire is going to be an unhealthy amount of garbage. To be serious for once, this level actually seems possible to do, no lives lost, if only I can manage to stop these guys from running me down. Which is only doable if I micro my barracks perfectly and use my abilities with quintessential timing. Which may I add, is impossible when these necrophiles are trying to take me to the bone zone simultaneously on the other side of the map. These Vesnan wannabes and the shadow archers for that matter was not giving me an inch of mercy. But I was not going down without a fight. I would not go home without obtaining that power to shut this mob spawner off. Fuck this shit, I'm taking my 8 lives and I'm leaving. With this play and only one level remaining, it is clear to everyone and their grandmother that past me had enough of this pain fetish of a run and wanted out. But this challenge wasn't going to let me off the hook that easy. It wanted to twist my nipples one last time before letting me go. And no one could have prepared me for what I was in for on this final level. But unbeknownst and naive, in I went. Vesnan hit me with some of that peace negotiation type beat shit, to which I declined, cause I was straight up seeing red. This pesky trader was going to pay for the immoral deeds he had performed in the light of the seven kingdoms. Not even his SWAT team could save his sorry ass. Oh, well they actually did for a long time, 27 hours to be precise. But I was committed to this task and only got more pissed off by this. On this level Ironhide didn't care what decision I made, cause it was always absolutely the wrong one. Let me start off by saying that sending a necromancer at wave 1 is straight up diabolical. It is physically impossible for the human eye to see the amount of chlamydia this guy brought to the arena. At this point I I know you guys are screaming at me to try the Tesla, and I did. It don't work mate. No matter what I did, I was bound to lose a shitload of lives, which often entailed losing half of him if I was lucky. My best option was to paralyze him with a barrack and killing skeletons with my Jagger attacker. But since the skeletons are such small targets, getting the rain of fire to do any more but tickle them is beyond me, no matter how you aim it. Do you know what would make this even more AIDS? Flying enemies at the next wave. Killing all of the gargoyles requires them to be positioned in the middle of the path, which is random, so that shit was also very inconsistent. If you manage to play everything well enough, then don't worry, because wave 6 is decided by luck. Your only option is to pray to Iron Jesus that the mob spawner will give you at least two set of doggos and one set of imps, which only happens 15% out of 80% of the time. If you get two or three sets of imps, there will be too many of these fucks to handle. You can make it through if you played well enough, but you will lose so many lives that the rocket riders will inevitably stroll through your defenses and make you that bitch. Watch your jet bro, watch your jet! But wait, there is more. Six 
necromancers. Are you serious? After my last challenge, which we do not speak of, I had originally planned to give myself a break for once, and I thought that only adding no lives lost as a side quest was going to do that. But like always, I was goddamn wrong, and I had accidentally created something even harder. Getting through the necromancers without a Tesla was stupid, and required quite a bit of human ingenuity, which involved mashing my mouse one button and dancing around them until they got confused, and tree roots hugging them so hard that their ancestors could feel it in their graves. Wait, what is this shit? Other than something that provides me with carpal tunnel syndrome. I could go on and on about how much ass fucking I was receiving here. So I will just show you this nutty footage of the men of God taking these spiders to Vandal Village and get to the part you have all been waiting for. To make up for how long this video took to make, I decided to throw this demonstration of dick sucking on live air. But to my surprise, I actually got to the end. And that meant that it was now time to tussle with that sweet playdate of mine. He left his man cave for the first time in a month and went out to meet me with 20 chats boosting my already huge ego my dumbass actually thought that this final boss was going to be as easy as the spider mastermind but due to an oversight on my part this shit was goddamn hard i'd forgotten how the boss works you need him to transform into his persona as fast as possible but that was not very possible no, when my rain of fire does as much damage as being slapped in the face with a soggy loaf of bread but i kept my head leveled planned a few optimizations and i was ready to go once more there was just one problem which was that it would take me three days of playing until I got back there again. Pain. But eventually, the stars aligned and the mastermind of this invasion was once again throbbing with excitement, cause this attempt was even worse than my first one. I was literally scraping the bottom of the barrel to come up with these optimizations, and it didn't even make a difference. I'm sorry, but I think we'll have to take another ill. I don't know how to beat this. Psych. I had a stroke of genius out of the blue, and suddenly I had found the catalyst for my erection and Lord Verney's beatdown. And it just so happened that on that day I would get the biggest nut of luck of my career and get to the boss fight after only an hour's playtime. Turns out that these brain dead hunks are the missing contestants in this special edition of the Brassas house. But this time I would buy two of them. I guess Vesna wasn't prepared for a threesome cause these two pounding him in led to him blowing his load way too early. Which in this case would render him a goner. This bloke got his ass annihilated in mere seconds. And I was finally a free man. After almost 66 hours of this traumatic experience. I can safely declare this game on veteran without heroes or stars as possible. Only level 10, 11 and 12 was not beaten no lives lost. And my final score was 196 out of 240 lives saved. And just to put into perspective how tedious the last level was, then I will just let you know that it took up almost half of the entire runtime. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, then I love you. And I think you should know that I appreciate you for supporting these operations. Kiss kiss, have a wonderful day.